Hello, everyone. This is your host, Deborah Poneman, and I'd like to welcome you to our call with today's guest, Marilyn Aloria. Marilyn is an internationally known psychic medium, gifted teacher, and spiritual healer. Her gifts were inherited from her grandmother and aunt, and Marilyn has been having psychic experiences since the age of five. She engages all of her gifts, seeing, hearing, knowing, and feeling, to give people messages from their guides who, she says, are always with you, as well as from your loved ones who have crossed over. Marilyn is known for engaging her clients in a warm feeling as she guides them to anchor into their soul's purpose. And she does more than just provide a connection to the afterlife. She gives her clients an action plan and teaches them how to develop their own gifts, gaining access to the answers that sit in the seat of their souls. And today you'll discover how to really hear what your heart is saying to you and how to use your intuitive gifts to live the life you were meant to live. You'll also discover your parallel life, the life you want to live that is happening now since time is not linear and how to step into it. Marilyn will also be sharing with us a technique to learn how to recognize joy in your life and release distractions, and will take us through a quick exercise to tap into your soul. And finally, she'll share a tool for manifestation. Wow. Okay, I am really looking forward to this call. Marilyn, thank you for joining us. Welcome. Thank you so much, Deborah, and thank you for having me. Energy feels amazing, and I can't wait to reveal all the truths that my guides um, want to reveal to everybody. So thank you so much. Well, I am so feeling the energy of this call already. I'm amazed that I even made it through that introduction. (laughs) (laughs) So can you take a few minutes and share with us what you believe to be some of the major turning points that allowed you to manifest not only your current level of success, but this gift that you share with the world. I love the way you said that question because there are different turning points in everyone's life that help us to get to a certain point, you know, where we are and where I am at my journey. It definitely, there were many of them and they're not always the things that people think, you know, I didn't know that I was psychic at the age of five when I had the experience on Easter Sunday where my parents hid the gifts and they told me to hide in the other room. And when they told me to come out, I knew exactly where they hid my gifts and what they were. I knew the basket and the doll and they thought I was cheated, but I'm like five years old and I was Catholic. There was no way I was cheating. And through my growing up, I always had different experiences, but I was grew up in a very traumatic household, a very, it was very tumultuous. And I didn't know that what I was experiencing was psychic gifts and nobody around me, none of the adults knew that either. They just, nobody could really give me the attention that I needed at that point. My mother was raising four of us on her own. And it wasn't until my 20s when I started studying dream work. And this is where it's a turning point where I decided to pursue acting. I was already a successful line producer in television. And I've always wanted to be an actress. And I was in therapy. And I had post-traumatic stress syndrome. And my therapist at the time suggested me taking an acting class in order to get more comfortable with myself, gain my confidence, get my self-esteem going. And through my acting classes, I started learning about symbolism and I started learning doing dream work. And this is what really opened me up and helped me to start believing that there was something other than my small world out there because I started discovering my creative soul. Your soul is creative. And later on, like in my late 20s, I started hearing my name called and I would turn around and nobody would be there. I knew I was psychic. I was playing with tarot cards, but I didn't know I was a medium. I didn't know I could see dead people. And it later on when the Columbine killings happened, that was the first time I actually saw spirits and they were at the end of my bed in my room, the kids that did the killing. And then nine 11 happened and I was living in Manhattan and the pilots that flew the planes were at the end of my bed. And I still thought I was having a PTSD syndrome, you know, a post-traumatic stress thing. I didn't realize that I was seeing spirits. And then I moved to LA right after 9-11 because I was so scared. And I was in therapy at the time and I was never diagnosed with schizophrenia. I wasn't put on any medication. I was in therapy for like 16 years. And I started getting locked in rooms 
uh, doors would just lock, doorknobs would just fall off, and I like kept a screwdriver in every single room. And during this time, I was still working on myself. I was still into a lot of recovery, which was helping me to really trust my own inner compass, my own inner guidance system. And I walked into a door and I got seven stitches in my head. And I knew I had to see a psychic because I knew something was up with the doors. And I went to see a psychic and she said the dead were trying to reach me that I needed to see a medium. And I went to see a medium and the second the medium walked through the door, she said, you're a medium. And that was it for me. The floodgates opened and I started seeing spirits everywhere I went and it scared the heck out of me. And I had to learn how to use my gifts. One of the mediums I went to see, he said, learn how to use your gifts because it'll move your own life along. And he was right. I did not want to be a reader. I just followed my joy. I followed my heart. I was always interested in paranormal and psychic ability in witches. And I just followed my joy and started studying. And before I knew it, a whole life opened up in front of me and doors opened up and I became a full-time medium and teacher. And my goal as a medium is to teach everybody how to access the gifts inside themselves so they can move their life along. I hope I answered that question. What an amazing story. And all I knew about you is that you work for like MTV and Fox and NBC and and that you were so successful and then you gave up your career and wow, that story is incredible. And what I would like to know in this case is if you want to do for us is to show us how we can access our own joy, why don't you start there? Why don't you tell us? Because most of us don't really know. We don't know how to follow our intuition. We don't know how to tap into our soul. So I would just like to give you carte blanche to tell us where we begin. That's a great question, too, because, you know, it's true. A lot of us don't know what our own joy is. And we're in the habits of life. You know, you have to pay bills. You have to go to this job. You have to feed the kids. And we get into habits where we really get disassociated with our own soul because we're just functioning. We're trying to keep our head above water. So we don't take the moment to stop and really ask ourselves, you know, what is giving us happiness? One of the quick tools that I give people, because it all comes down to consciousness and awareness. And one of the things that I ask people to do when they come to see me is at the end of each day, I would ask everybody to go through their day and go through it, all the events of the day from a scale to one to 10, giving one being the least fun and 10 being the most fun. And just go through your day and rate your day. Start recognizing what really brought joy into your life. For me, you know, when I do that, my guides had asked me to do that for about three weeks so that I could get really clear about the things I needed to let go of and the things that I really enjoy. And a lot of my joy comes from kissing my cat on the lips. Little things like that, or being at Gelson's, you know, buying something and having a quick conversation with the cashier because we just had some moment there where we laughed. It wasn't the things that I was doing. You know, I was in many jobs where I hated what I was doing for a living, but I had to pay the bills. And if I could bring up the, turn up the volume on the joyful moments and notice that they were simple things that didn't cost a lot of money. All of a sudden, I was stepping more into my joy, stepping more into my soul. And you know what happens? And you know this, Deborah. It brings in more joy. You start attracting more of that into your life. Yes. Well, that is a very, very simple technique, how to recognize our joy. And how about one of the things that I know that you talk about is how we can learn to trust our intuition. Because that's yeah. another thing that people have a hard time with. What is our intuition and what is just what we want it to be? It's a great question because the other thing that I always teach with people, there's a couple of things and I want to talk about soul work and being in your soul and also knowing your guides because I come from the belief system that we all have guides. So whether you, and I also ask people to believe in something. I don't care if you believe in God or if you believe in the tree outside your door, believe in something, especially yourself. 
So a lot of my work in terms of getting people comfortable with intuition and learning how to use their psychic gifts is I ask to allow their imagination to run. Because when you study with me, your imagination runs in alignment with your psychic ability. So you can't really get to know, like a lot of times when people start working with their guides or start working with trusting their psychic ability, the question they always ask me is, how do I know if I'm making it up or not? Or you know, like you said, you're attached to something. You want a particular outcome. You want to know if that boy likes you or if you're going to get that job. When we're emotionally attached to things, how do we know that the information we're getting is definitely information from our higher God, you know, our higher sources? And there's a, I'm going to break this down in a couple of ways for everybody. One, the first thing you want to do is give license to your imagination. You also want to start becoming consciously aware of everyday symbols that are popping into your view. So what happens a lot of times is people will see numbers over and over again, but they write it off to coincidence. Or they'll be out and they're seeing butterflies everywhere, but they'll write it off to, oh, it's butterfly season. No, everything that you are seeing, especially in repetitive symbols, is your guides communicating to you. Your guides are trying to get you to open up to the information. So what I ask people to do is to go, we have so much at our fingertips with the internet. Go online, look up what butterflies mean, look up what the number five means, and only take the meaning that resonates with you. Don't like, you'll find like three different sources that'll tell you what butterflies mean. Don't take just the first one you read. Take something that gives you that zing in your heart. Know how you feel about it. Our feelings are our guidepost for our lives. So it really is about dropping into your heart and knowing how you feel. That's why I gave that quick little exercise of the scale at the end of the day, because it starts getting you tapped into your heart. What makes, how do you feel about doing that job? How do you feel about kissing your cats or your dogs? How do you feel about taking that walk around the block? It really helps you to inform yourself. What I wanted to say to everybody, so when I asked my guides, I started channeling right away because I was used to using my imagination from acting. And I was seeing a therapist at the time that helped people like me to understand our gifts because I always had suicidal thoughts for the longest time. I didn't want to live on the planet. And I started to understand that mediums don't really want to live on the planet because we always have our foot in the other dimension. And I'm sure a lot of people listening to this interview right now are relating to what I'm saying. So I was seeing a, a psychic, um, excuse me, a therapist that knew how to deal with psychics and mediums, and I felt an energy pushing up against me. And I said to her, you know, I feel this energy, and she said, well, what is it? And I just closed my eyes, and I automatically went there. Because in acting, you learn how to just go with your imagination, how to just trust it, because a lot of acting is you're working with your imagination. And I met my first guide and I started talking to him. So I continued on channeling with my guides and talking to them. And at one point, I was a very skeptical medium, extremely skeptical. I had said to my guides, how do I know if I'm making this up or not? And they said to me, who cares if you're making it up? We're telling you some great stuff. We're not giving you bad information. So just go with it. And that's one of the things that I would ask people to do is to really start paying attention to everyday symbols, paying attention to their dreams, keep a dream journal by their bed, write down the symbols, even if you can only remember one thing, and look it up. Give credibility to it. The way to trust your intuition, start working with your third chakra. Really, every morning, get up. Your third chakra is above your navel, and it's yellow. Get up every morning. See it as a room. Wake up into that yellow light inside your chakra, you know, above your navel. I see it as a room, four walls, a ceiling, and a floor. Write your name on every wall and own that space. The more we start operating from inside our bodies and each chakra has a gift, the more we start operating from what's inside of us. and We empower ourselves. We start to get to know ourselves really well. I'm going to stop so that you can ask me more questions, Deborah, because I get flooded with information from my guides, and I want to make sure, and I have so much information to share, I want to make sure it's not scattered. Well, my thought is go for it, because okay. if right now your guides are going fast and furiously, it's obviously what we all need to hear, so I surrender to that and just go. Okay, good. So I'm going to keep going then, and what I'm going to ask everybody to do is to think about something they really, really want in their life right now. And just close your eyes and visualize what you really want. And I want you to see a color drop into its space. 
So I want you to see the visual of that image move away, and I want you to see a color. What color did you get, Deborah? I got orange. Great. So the reason why I do this work is how does orange feel? When you close your eyes now, Deborah, where in your body does the orange fall? Hmm. Orange is like not my color, but that's the color that came in. And I know that it's the color of the second chakra. So when you said that, my mind made me have that color go down there. But actually, now that I'm feeling it, it's my upper chest and throat and my face is feeling flushed with that orange. So I don't know. That's what's happening. Great. So for me, she's right. Orange is the second chakra. and It's about creativity. And yours is falling into your upper chest and your throat, which to me is about truth, you know, speaking your truth, living your truth, knowing your truth. So the reason why I give everybody this exercise is because the color allows you to invite in something even better than what you visualize. We tend to visualize and do manifestation, which is why when I ask people to do manifestations, I ask them to work with color, not pictures from magazines, because what color allows you to do is to allow something even better to come in. Instead of like, you know, I want that tall, redheaded guy with blue eyes, if I associate a color to what love feels like to me, I'm allowing source to bring something to me that's even better. So that color allows us to invite that in. And then I ask you to know where it is in your chakras because you can almost feel it. When something like that is being presented in your life, you'll feel it. You'll feel, oh, there's my throat again. There's my upper heart. Oh, I'm feeling that orange color. You're associating feeling to it. Oh, this must be good. That helps you to guide your intuition as to whether it's a good decision or not to move forward in a certain area. So we all want certain goals in our life. Like right now, I'm doing a lot of production meetings for a television show, for my own television show. That's something I really would desire in my life. So I see blue right away. And I see blue in my throat. Now, blue is definitely associated with your throat chakra, which is speaking truth. And television show would give me the ability to speak my truth. But I also know now if I'm going into a production meeting or say somebody new calls me, I'm going to close my eyes and see what color it is. And say it's gray and it falls in another area, I'm going to know not to walk towards that. It's going to allow me to operate at a place that's outside my thoughts. It's going to allow me to operate in feeling, and that's what intuition is. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes complete sense. And I think that those who listen to this show, we know to move out of our minds and into our intuitions. And this is a really valuable tool for all of us. And I thank you. So can you keep on going and give us more about manifesting what is really for our highest and alignment with our greatest good? Yes. So I'm going to give you another tool right now. I'm going to give you a couple. But the first one I'm going to ask everybody to do is to close their eyes. And I'm going to ask you, your guides know what I'm asking. So you don't need to be concerned about that. I want them to give you a color. And now I want you to push that color aside. Let it go. See like water coming down to wipe that color away. You can see salt falling down to wipe that color away. And I want them, they know what I'm asking, to give you another color. Okay. What was the first color you got, Deborah? Green. And what was the second? Red. Red? Great. So I asked your guides to show you a color associated with yes and a color associated with no. That's interesting. (laughs) Yeah. And you got green and red, which is opposite. Well, no, you got exactly, that's it. Go is green and no is red. And you had no idea what I was asking. No idea. So the way that I do that, and we'll do some more techniques, and I'll teach some other things, but the reason why I do that is because, like I said, our minds, you know, we're all – We all have these thoughts running through our heads. They're based on past experiences, habits, and beliefs. And we really want to come to new experiences with a fresh slate as best we can. But, you know, we all have lives. We all have past experiences. We have past lives, if you believe in that. So I try, my guides try to switch it up a bit with this type of work 
so that we can try to get to a clearer answer that's more beneficial for us, not based on past experiences or what somebody may have told us we have to be or do in this world. So what I would ask you to do is say you want to decide, I would start simple. Say you get an email from a friend asking you to go to dinner. Before you respond to that email, because a lot of times that can be habit, you know, oh, I have to go to dinner with Maria because Maria is always a good friend to me and she needs me right now. Instead of doing that, I would ask you to close your eyes and see what color comes up. And a lot of times you may be like, oh, I'm going to see green because I'm supposed to do yes. You'd be surprised. Your guys will shove another, that color in red if it's supposed to be no. Wow. And we almost can't talk ourselves out of it. This is fantastic because I always do what I think I should do. And this could give me and all of us listening a tool if we can then actually listen to what our guides are telling us and not have all of those habits of needing to be nice and needing to take care of the world push away the red right because when you do that then you start getting more aligned with your soul and you start knowing what you're supposed to be doing in this world you have more time for yourself you're not tapped out emotionally and energetically because you're having coffee with someone that you really don't have the energy to have coffee with that day you need to have that energy for yourself. And I really feel like this work with guides teaches you that you're not alone. Somebody always has your back. Because how many times, and I'll speak about myself, I felt alone. I felt like nobody was there. And any time, like, I can tell you from my own experience, and I'm telling you I was a skeptical medium, I could not believe how my guides had my back. I was working on a murder case, a famous murder case. And it just happened that I came upon it because I was asked to clear a restaurant and I went in and I saw the spirit. I didn't know the spirit, who he was, and I was giving them all this information. They thought I was crazy. And then I left the restaurant and they found out days later that this celebrity died behind their restaurant. And all the information I gave them, they were able to confirm and they asked me to come back. Fast forward a couple of months later, the restaurant owner wanted me to continue to work on the case because it was such a newsworthy case. And I wanted to work on it because the person that went away for the crime was the wrong person. So I was working with this restaurant owner on this case, and he was really trying to take advantage of me and manipulate me. So I saw it and decided to cut cords with him and not work with him any longer. And all the time I was like feeling really depressed because I wanted to help the spirit. I wanted to help the spirit find the answers. And I couldn't do it because this man, the restaurant owner, had the money. And so one day, two months later, he called me up and said, come back into the restaurant. Let's see if we can work out a deal so that we could solve this case. And I was so excited because he had the people, the political power to reopen the case and do everything. And I went back to the restaurant. And we sat there and we had a conversation. And I was like, this is great. It's going to work. And then so we shook hands on the deal, and he turned around to me, and he said, I have to ask you, where's the spirit? He hasn't been here since the day you left. And that's when I knew spirits have your back because that spirit, I knew he called in other mediums to try to get them to work with him. This restaurant owner wanted to sell this movie. He had already talked to big Hollywood players, but the spirit would not communicate with him. He left the restaurant. And I knew he had my back. And that taught me that we have guides and we have spirits and people on the other side that have our backs all the time. But we're so distracted by everyday occurrences, things that we, habits that we're doing that are keeping us from hearing the communication with them. So another thing I want to offer all of you to do is a nice, fun technique. What I'd like you to do is to take a piece of paper, three pieces of paper, I'd like you to write a question on top of each piece of paper, something that you really want to get an answer to. And I'd like you to fold those papers over almost like a fan, but leave a good space down so that you could write things on it. So it's almost like the first half is folded over so you can't read the question, but you have enough room to write down information. You're going to shuffle those papers, and you're going to go through the week asking your guides to help you find the answers to these questions. So say that day you wake up and you had a dream about a beach. You're going to go to those papers and write beach on one or more of those papers. You're just going to feel energetically where you're drawn. Where do you want to write that beach down? Then say you go to the store and you can't take your eyes off of all the red color you're seeing outside. 
and you're going to go home to those papers and you're going to write red down. Then say you're like noticing the number five everywhere you go. You keep noticing five. You're going to go home. Now you can write five down on each one of those papers or you may just be drawn to write it to one. After the week is up, I want you to look up all those symbols and write down the meanings next to them. And then when you're done, you're going to open up the question, see what the question was, and then read the answers. And I'm going to almost guarantee, even if you're not taken to the exact answer, you are going to be so much further along down the path that you're not going to be able to believe that your guides helped you to this degree. I have many, many students that when they do the work that I'm offering up to all of you now, they can't believe the answers they get. They can't believe that it was there the whole time. So that's another quick technique to help. And my techniques are different, as you can tell, Deborah. I'm sure they're a little bit different than people that you've spoken to. Yes, they are, and I love them. I can't wait to do that. I just want to get really clear. When we write a question on one question per piece of paper, and then we fold it over so that we can't see what the question is, and then intuitively when something keeps occurring, like butterflies or something like that, we write on the bottom half of that paper, not looking at the question, and then at the end of the week, we open it up, see what the question is, and then see what we've written on that particular piece of paper. Is that correct? That's correct, and thank you for repeating that because I like can get into my airy fairy space, and I can edit myself out. So thank you so much. You repeated it, and that's exactly how to do it. Well, so. I just want to get it straight because I'm going to do it. I was going to share a couple more because you know I find games of chance a lot of fun. So you know we have the ability to go out and buy a tarot deck, which I'm all for. You know, or you have the ability to go out and buy things, but I really find that when we create our own work. It's just that much more powerful, you know. So I do games of chance with people, and I tell them, take 25 pieces of paper, separate them out into five different sections. One section you're going to put five different numbers on. One section you're going to write down five people you admire and a characteristic trait. One section you're going to write down colors, different colors on each piece of paper. So you have five in each category. First one is numbers, second one is uh, somebody you admire, characteristics, third one is color, fourth one will be animals and what they stand for, and the fifth one will be crystals, say. So you're going to do the research ahead of time, like say you write down bear, I'll say butterfly because I've been using that, butterflies mean transmutation through joy for me. Then we're going to write down bees, bees mean creativity. So then you fold up each piece of paper and you put it in a basket. So you're going to have 25 different pieces of paper folded up in a basket. And say you're going through a choice and you don't know what to, you have one day you wake up and you're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should take this new job. You're going to go into that basket and pull out five different pieces of paper and you're going to open them up. And I'm going to almost guarantee you that you're going to have the answer to that question. And you could pick out five different animal pieces of paper. You don't know what you're going to pick out. But your guides are going to guide you to the answer or at least guide you to more information so you can have a better informed answer. A lot of times when I go into channel, I was going through a lot with my dogs and I was trying to figure out what to do with the trainer and the trainers that I was choosing. And I didn't have time to meditate on a Friday. So finally on Sunday, I sat down with my guides and I started asking them the questions and they gave me the answer right away. And I said to them, why didn't I sit down on Friday with you to ask you this question? And they said, because you didn't have the information. You wouldn't have gotten a clear answer from us. Sometimes they don't hand everything over to you because you need to do living. You're living your life. So it may take just getting more information and these, these games will help you get information in order to make a more informed decision where you're living in alignment with your soul. You know, what I'm understanding from this, and by the way, I love this, so it's not like we have to go out and buy a deck of, you know, animal totem cards and a deck of this and this. We can just do it ourselves, which is so exciting because it really saves a lot of money. And I could see how this would work if we do the research. See, that's the thing that I love about what you're saying. Sometimes I'll see butterflies. I was just in California. I kept 
constantly seeing deer. It was just insane. Everywhere I would look, there would be deer, deer, deer in, in places where they didn't show up before. And I thought, oh, this must mean something. But duh, I never thought to like, look it up. What does seeing a deer mean? So what you're saying is look up bees, look up butterflies, look up deer, see what it means. Write it down on this piece of paper next to the word butterfly. And then when you're faced with a decision, pick five of these and you'll not only see that it has a number or a color or an animal, but also what that means. Right. And, you know, I can teach you something else really quick right now, how to break down your own symbols based on your own life experience. So what I would ask you, Deborah, is what did deers mean to you? You know what? They didn't mean anything. That's why I want to go look it up. It just, they would look at me and that was it. It was like, I felt like they had a message for me because they wouldn't run away. They would like stare at me like, are you getting this? Or how many times do we have to keep showing up until you get this? And I wasn't getting it other than that there was something I needed to get. How were you feeling when you saw them? Okay. That's an excellent question kind of exhilarated, kind of like free. And then they would scamper around and I don't know. And they were usually baby deer. So there was something very fresh and new and like a new opening. Now I'm thinking about it now or feeling it now. There's an innocence, a freshness, an opening, an excitement, a like kind of like the scamper together kind of a feeling. Great. And then which chakra do you feel like they were energetically opening up for you? Just quickly answer. Heart. Great. And then give me three characteristics right off the top of your head of deer. Yes. Beautiful, open, innocent. So whatever you were thinking about at those moments or whatever your experiences you were having in your life at those moments, You now broke down the symbol of deer, even though I'd ask you to still look it up, would be great. But you know that it's about a heart opening. It's about being something that's being offered to you. It's about walking in beauty, walking in like scampering around, freedom, innocence. So it feels to me like it's a whole new beginning that's being offered up to you. And they're asking you to just trust it and walk with it and be with it and allow it to appear and allow it to show up. And it's exciting. Yeah. Yes, yes. And thank you for that. And isn't this beautiful that, again, for so many of us, we say, oh, it's so cool. All these butterflies showed up in my life. But I don't think many of us took the next step to either look up what it meant or to ask ourselves those questions. What do you feel? Where do you feel it? And a lot of times. So beautiful. People take it for granted. Like I'll tell a story. I had a client who did a meditation of mine to meet her higher self and she got ladybugs and she was like, oh, please, ladybugs, give me a break. So the next day she went to the beach and she was meditating on the beach and she really felt she was connecting to source and her eyes were closed and she opened her eyes and she looked down at her hands and there were like six ladybugs and she took a picture of it and I put it out on a newsletter, six ladybugs sitting on her hands. So spirit was like, she wouldn't, she didn't believe the credibility of the ladybugs coming to her in the meditation because she was like, come on, that's ladybugs. Ladybugs are always there. Who cares? You know, what are you trying to tell me? So spirit like then put the ladybugs physically on her hands for her to wake up and say, yes, we're hearing you. And that's the kind of stuff that happens in this work. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I've never been so clear until this moment interviewing you that our guides are all around us at every moment, placing these symbols in front of us in our path, and yet we are living our lives and moving so fast that sometimes we don't stop and embrace those symbols and see how useful they can be in our lives. And I so appreciate that you're giving us these tools to really communicate with our guides and use them to make our lives more glorious. So, wow, I'm so grateful to you and grateful for these tools for us to have this channel of communication with our guides. Thank you for this. You're welcome. I mean, it's 
I feel like it's my soul's work right now to get people to understand that they can read for themselves, that they can get answers themselves, that they don't have to feel alone. It's really important to me. Like another quick technique I would give is if you wake up in the morning with a song in your head, which happens to me almost every day, and I didn't realize that with my guides giving me a song, and I'd look up the lyrics, and I was like, oh, my goodness, that's an answer. They're telling me what to do. Or if you go to, like, you know, Trader Joe's is big here or Whole Foods, and you hear a song, don't take for granted that that's a song that you loved when you were, like, in your 20s or teens. Go and look up the lyrics of that song. Because music is constantly playing in the stores, but we're not always hearing it. But when we hear it, it's almost like a megaphone next to our ears. Our guides are asking us to open up to the lyrics and hear the song of life right now. Wow. <laughs> this is so fantastic. <laughs> and, and again, usually it just turns into music, even if it is something that was something from our childhood. We'll listen to, oh, isn't that cool? But that is our guides just saying, listen, listen, listen. And I just have to tell you this. This is so crazy, Marilyn. I am telling you. Obviously, I have my computer open because I am doing the dashboard for this call so that it's just the volume and everything is perfect for everyone. And behind the dashboard, you know, there's another screen open. And I just looked at it. I looked down at the screen because I constantly do that. And I see behind it, it says Polly D. And, you know, DJ Polly D has that song called Back to Love. And uh, as soon as you said that, it was like, oh, my God, that is exactly what I need to hear right now. This is insane. It is really insane. So, wow, you are just totally a medium for bringing this profundity into our life. And I have another question right now. Something that was in your introduction or in the bullet point was something about that we have a parallel life and the life you want to live is happening now and time isn't linear and how we can step into that. Can you explain this to us? Yeah, definitely. You know, and I know that you know this, like we have a parallel life. Time is not linear. So I believe that, and if you believe in past lives or not, that's happening at the same time as future lives are happening So a lot of times what we desire to have in our life right now is already existing and running next to us. So it's running in alignment with our life that we're presently aware of. So I like to teach people that you can step into that life or bring it into this life. And a lot of times, too, when we're making choices in each and every moment, we're setting up choices in our future life or the life that's like, you know, the next moment of future of what we know. And we want to be very conscious to the information we're getting so that when we're making a choice in today, right now, in this moment, that choice is really in alignment with our soul and our fullest expression of ourselves. So say for right now, um, I'll go back to my television show. I'm ready for my television show to happen. And it's already happening in a parallel life that existence, that experience, or at least that emotional experience of what I feel it'll bring is happening. So how do I bring that into my life now? What walls are blocking me? So one of the first things I would do is visualize a wall of water between this life now and this life next to me. And I would imagine walking on a path, looking at it and seeing it play out. And then I would watch the water fall away and the two paths converge. I'm going to ask you to do that and then see how it feels to be on that path. Like I would literally ask people to get up and actually with their eyes closed, know where you're going, but start walking that path, like physically walking it in the meditation so that you could see what it feels like. Because what you want to do is make that emotional life alive in you now. Everybody knows this in manifestation. It's not just about thinking. It's about feeling. So you want to feel it completely. And then I would ask you to put color with it. I would ask you to take a ball of colored energy and put it in front of all your chakras and let it go up and down your chakras. And notice when the ball of energy isn't moving and notice when it's vibrating really high. And say it's not moving on the first, third, and fifth chakra. 
then I would say to you, you need to now engage in your life what makes you feel safe. That's the first chakra for me. What you have to trust in your gut instinct. That's the third chakra. Fifth chakra is about truth. What aren't you speaking to yourself, the truth to yourself? When I tell people they have to speak their truth, it's mainly the truth to themselves. So you may say to yourself, I want to be an actress, and then you'll hear a voice come in going, you can't be an actress. What are you, crazy? You're too old. And then you're like, oh, yeah, you're right. It can't be an actress. Know the truth you're speaking to yourself. It's a big topic, so it's hard for me to get all the information in, but those are a few techniques to play with it. I'm hearing a lot of noise on the line. Are you hearing noise? Actually, I'm not. I think we're okay. Hold okay, on. Okay, good. Let me so that may be the spirits coming through and talking. They love hmm. to mess with technology. <laughs> okay. I, well, no, I'm totally cool from, from this side. I don't hear any noise. But... It stops now. They must have all been talking at the same time. <laughs> It'll be interesting to hear, if, you know, in the replay, if they hear any voices like, hello, which happens a lot of the time. <laughs> well, in the meantime, they could talk all they want because we're having such a good time. And I love that thing about parallel life. I love what you said right at the beginning that you're walking this path. Your life is, is it exists in this third dimensional reality. And yet there is this parallel life of what you want and you know that it can be and you know that it should be and you know that this glorious life awaits you. And as you're walking, there's that wall of water between and let it fade away and let those two lives converge. And I have one question and that is, you mean that in our mind's eye or our heart's eye, we should feel that wonderful life that we know, you know, the TV show and the success of it? Yes, that's exactly it. It's for me personally, like it's also letting go of end results. So for me, you know, say for some reason my television show isn't going to happen. Well, what energy does that bring to me? Well, it brings energy of me of being able to reach an audience, more people. So what have I chosen to do? I'm now going to do Google Hangouts. I'm going to do things where I get to teach people and I'm able to visually teach people so that they can tune in and they can have interaction with me in a whole other medium. So I'm not waiting for the production company or the network to pick up the show. I'm going to take the energy of what that feels like and incorporate it into my life now. So it allows you to come up with other solutions. Mm. And you wow, wouldn't even that's... know that that solution was available until you energetically like, oh, this is why I want to do it because this is the feeling I want to put out there. This is what I want to feel in my body. Great. Oh, here's a solution. Great. Wow. To take the energy of what it would feel like and whether it's happening or not, just dive into that energy. And the more you do that, the more likely it is that it will manifest in the perfect way. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, again, it's about we're walking the path. It's up to us to dictate our lives. You know, I know a lot of people believe we don't have control, but we do have control over how we feel, which everybody knows. And we have control over, we do have control over choices we make, who we want to hang out with, who we want to spend time with, who we want to be with, who we want to invite into our lives. And this lets us get clear as to what our heart is telling us. And you'll notice, you know, people are always amazed. I have a lot of boundaries around my work, around certain things, because I have to. I'm a medium. But I don't have people in my life that I don't want in my life. I really operate. I'm lucky where I do have a lot of different television connections happening right now, because I'm using that example. And the people that I'm dealing with are amazing people, because when I get approached by somebody who's not in alignment with my higher vision, I choose not to work with them, and I'm not afraid. Look, me putting this out there, you know, it's something we said before in the pre-interview, Deborah, how not to let go of something until you're fully ready to see it, you know, to let it go. I agree with that. I agree that I hold back certain things that I'm going to talk about because until I energetically feel it to fullest, then I'm not going to let other people color my experience. But right now where I'm sitting with all of this, this is something I desire, but I also know that I will – have this feeling, this incorporation in my life, no matter what, whether a television show happens for me or not, doesn't matter because I'm going to take ownership of being able to reach the audience that I want to reach in my way. Does that make, I know I'm saying a lot, so I hope it's making sense. And I love how you repeat everything because I sometimes have a lot of conversations going on in my head and I don't know what gets out all the time. 
Well, the reason I repeat everything is to make sure that I have it clear because I'm going to be using all of these tools in my life <laughs> just in case anybody else needs more clarity. But I do it because I think everything that you shared with us is so incredibly valuable and so incredibly useful. And the only thing that I'll repeat is when you have something that's really precious to you, an idea, sometimes it's better not to share it with people because what is sacred should be kept secret just in case you run up against the discouragement committee who's going to tell you all of the reasons why your idea isn't going to work. But once you've manifested your idea to the point that even if the discouragement committee shows up, it's not going to damper your commitment to manifesting that idea. When you get to that point, then it's fine to share. So that's what we were talking about. But also, you took it a step further, and that is even if it hasn't manifested yet in the way that having a TV show, you can manifest it in other ways energetically by matching that vibration of what it would be like when you have that TV show and the joy and the expansion and the impact so you can match that energy. I love that concept. I love everything that you shared with us, and I cannot believe that our time is almost up. I want to talk to you forever, and I'm sure our listeners are saying, no, don't stop. But what I'm curious about right now is can you take a few minutes to share some of the amazing turnarounds that you've seen in the lives of people who have applied what you teach, results that you've seen in people's lives? Yeah, definitely. And I, I was telling Deborah when we did the pre-interview that I don't remember stories because I don't remember readings when I'm reading or teaching. And luckily for me, I have a lot of students that come back and tell me how things change their life. So one of my favorite stories that I tend to tell is about a woman who came to me for a reading and she was working as a personal assistant for this very high profile couple. And in the reading, apparently I told her that she needed to look into cooking and she and life coaching and stuff. And she wrote me months later and she said, when you said that to me, I thought you were crazy. And she took it. She trusted me enough and took the information and went out into the world. And now she's a nutritional life coach and she loves it. She left her career and left her job. So what a lot of times what will happen in even in the classes that I teach, you know, people will tell me how they just know to trust their guides. And like I have another woman who's had a lot of health Stuff, a lot of health things happening to her. And she's been in a job, a very technical job for many, many years. And her guides have been pushing her in a creative realm. And she's always wanted to be creative. And she does these things with purses. She fixes purses up, old designer purses. And from working with her guides, the doors just keep opening for her because now she's open and she keeps meeting people that are helping her dream to come true and are going to allow her to leave this job she's been in for 20, 25 years to pursue her passion. Because now that she's following, like her guides are showing her, you know, working with the purses, working with colors, and then all of a sudden she'll meet somebody who will give her a piece of information that'll help her to get that stuff out there even further. So she's another person who's just been able to go forward. And then I have another student who is living in Japan and she's taken quite a few of my classes and she's a healer. And because she's been working with her guides and you meet a healing guide and you meet different guides, you know, love guides, you can meet different guides. She's finally starting to trust her path in life to be a healer to other people. And she's letting her guides talk to her. And now I've got her to the point where she's doing readings for people and she's getting blown away by the information she's getting from her guides about people she's never even met. All I'm supplying her with is a name. And she's so right on every single time with the readings that she's doing. And it's because she's opening up to her guide. She has a health guide. She goes to the health guide. The health guide gives her the information. And then she has all this information. So now she's like on this course of action of learning like flower therapy and learning Reiki and all these different types of modalities, things she's always wanted to do. But she's been so fearful that she couldn't be successful at it. Mm-hmm. Your guides help you to get confidence. They help you to really learn. You know, I have another client who's a student who's an artist. And I've taught her, you know, you can tap into the energy of a famous artist that's passed. And you can summon that energy as long as they have the soul's permission. They're not going to come forward unless you have the soul's permission because that's how I teach. 
and we were doing a seance one day and she called in Coco Chanel and we were getting information from Coco Chanel for her. And it was, it was really beneficial. You know, it's beneficial. We have, say you want to be an actress, you know, you can call in Catherine Hepburn's energy and ask Catherine Hepburn to help you guide your path. Which class should I take? Which acting school should I go to? And they will uh, give you the information. So those are some of the, you know, stories of people that have worked with me and have literally left their careers and have embarked on whole new careers because they feel like they have a team of players in their pocket that are showing them the way. Well, this is really utterly fantastic. And when you said that Coco Chanel came in, now I'm going to get my daughter very interested in this. So far, <laughs> she is never interested in any very much that I do. But if Coco Chanel could come in, now we have my daughter. <laughs> yeah, and that's what people need to realize. We have access to all that energy out there. You know, again, if somebody's not going to give you, like, I definitely want to have a sit down with Einstein, and I think he would come through. But, you know, if the soul spirit doesn't show up, the spirit won't show up, but somebody else will show up that's even more informative for you. There's always going to be something there, which is great. Well. We are so ready to find out the package that you've created for us because we are ready to be able to learn how to be more communication with our own guides and our love guide and our healing guide and our health guide. And I know that that's what you're going to be teaching us in your package. Just click on the special offer button that's on this page. So Marilyn, can you let everyone know what they'll find there? Yeah, they'll find my course, the 28-Day Challenge, Constant Communication with Your Guides. And this is a course where you, um, I teach differently and how to see, hear, feel, and know. And don't worry about if you're like, I don't have any of those gifts. Trust me, this, I use a lot of techniques and fun stories like I did on this call so that you get taken through how to, you know, you get to meet your higher self, you get to meet guides. If you can't visualize things, you work through feeling at first. You know, you're going to learn how to trust the answers that you're getting. You're going to learn how to ask direct questions to get those answers. You get, you just learn how you see, hear, feel, and know. You learn how to, you're going to get tools. Like, I believe in having a tool chest full of tools so that when you're feeling like you're hitting a wall, you're going to have so many tools that you can go to to learn how to get the answers. You're going to learn how to build a symbolic library. You're going to learn how to work with dreams. That class, I just got to give quickly how it came to me. I bought a house and I was in tons of debt because I didn't realize I bought a house that needed a lot of work. And I was freaking out about my debt. And my guide said, you're not allowed to think about your debt for the next three weeks. Every time you think about it, you have to put it in an imaginary ball and hand it to us. And I did it. And by the third day, this entire class dropped into my system. And I would have not been able to get this class information. And this class has been so amazing for so many people and amazing for me to teach it. And also financially, it's been amazing. I'm not going to lie. So it's helped. And it would have never gotten there had I been in panic mode. And that's what this class is going to teach you, how to get in touch with your truth, how to get the answers from your guides so that you can get a clear understanding of the path that you need to be on and make very conscious choices. Well, I love that it's the 28-day challenger because when you get something all at once, it could be overwhelming. But when it's very clear that the first day you do this and then the second day you do this, it's really something that people can do. They can handle that, and they're actually going to use it instead of it just sitting on their shelf like so many things end up (laughs) on our shelf. So this is very, very exciting. Well, can you tell us about there's some bonuses too? I don't know yeah, about the bonuses. It, the first bonus is a, is a private Facebook page, and people may think like, oh, that's nothing. That page is so active and amazing and has such incredible energy that anytime a new person gets on that page because they buy the package, they're like, oh, it's my first time here, and all these people respond, welcome, this is an amazing place. Like, friendships get formed, resources get shared. I go on the page, and I answer questions. So you get interaction with me, but a lot of times when I get on the page and somebody's asked a question, so many people have answered it in such a loving way and in the way that I would answer it, that I'm like, you're getting all these readings and help from other people if you choose to, but it's just a great place and you get to also share what you do so that you can offer up yourself and your resources to other people. 
And then I did a call on empathic ability. Empathic ability is how we pick up other people's energies. And a lot of times where a lot of us are empathic and we shut down our hearts because we don't know how to control it. And like I said, I teach different than a lot of mediums out there. And this is such an incredible two-hour course where you're going to learn protection mechanisms and how to work with your empathic ability so that it serves you and you don't have to shut it down and be fearful of it. And then clairvoyancy, clear seeing is a huge thing for me. So there's a class in here about clairvoyancy, clear seeing. And that's another two-hour class where you're going to learn how to engage your clairvoyant gifts. Don't worry about if you're not clairvoyant because everybody has the ability to see. And you're going to learn how to use that and how to apply it to your life. And then my favorite class, one of my favorite classes is Manifesting with the Moon. And I take you through a class where you learn how to use the moon's energy and do a color manifestation board and work with manifesting things in your life through the energy of the moon. And it's just, I tend to work with a lot of creative tools because I find that it's a lot of fun. And even, I'm not an artist in color sense, but whenever I do anything with color, I'm always like, wow, I can't believe I did that. It's so beautiful. And, you know, you wouldn't want to buy it, but it's beautiful to me because it's my soul being revealed on a piece of paper and it's wonderful. And then there's a bonus here of just meeting your guides, and it's just another bonus of just specifically, so say you one day you just want to work with just the meditation of your guide, and you'll work with that meditation so that you can just like, I just want to meet a separate guide, you know, I don't want to go through the whole course today, then that's what you would do. So those are my bonuses. This is fantastic because I think that my listeners are a lot like me, and that is <laughs> we instead of needing somebody between us and our guides, we'd rather learn how to contact our guides and really work with them ourselves. And this is just a complete blessing. Thank you so much for putting this package together for us. We are very, very grateful. Just click on the special offer button that's on this page. And two more questions for you. One is, what do you think is something that will begin to experience right away by putting what we learn in this package to use and what are the long-term benefits that we could look forward to? That's a great question. I, what you would benefit right away is realizing, I feel that you're not alone. Realizing that God, source, whatever you believe in, gave you passions for a reason. It wasn't so that you would be frustrated in them. It was so that you were being of service in them. So a lot of times we have interest in our life and we're frustrated because we can't seem to perform them to make a living or live them out or, you know, get the love of our life in our life. And this package really helps you to recognize that they are there for a reason. They are not to be ignored and that you're meant to be living and bathing in them every single day. And the long-term benefits are what I've recognized for my students in my own life is that you tend to see the world differently. You tend to get an understanding of information. You know, if some, an experience happens in your life, you have a new mechanism in place that allows you to have an understanding of that experience right away and what the solution is, and then you move through it much quicker. You know, when something appears in my life now, it's because of my guides and understanding the deeper meaning to it that I am able to move through it much faster and with confidence, and then I get to a whole higher platform in my life. And that's what I feel like the long-term benefits are, that you realize, wow, I just, I think the biggest thing I can say, Deborah, for me personally, and maybe it's because I felt alone for so many years in my life, I no longer feel alone. I know that they have my back, and I know that they want me to live the fullest of my life to the fullest expression of myself, fully engaged and not being fearful any longer. Wow. I think those are some pretty good long-term benefits, don't you? Those are some pretty good long-term benefits. We are there. Well, one more time, click on the special offer button. I am ecstatic about this special offer, and I'm just ecstatic about everything that you shared with us. You have given us so much, Marilyn, and we are so deeply grateful. Is there anything else you want to share before we say goodbye? No, I just want to thank everybody and thank you, Deborah, because I could just feel so much love on this call. 
And I just, my guides know, even if people are listening to the replay or whenever they're listening to this, my guides know exactly who's going to be listening to this. And I already know the energy is so incredible. And I want you to go out there and live your life to the fullest and know that you have all the answers inside yourself. And I thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to share what has helped me so much in my life with all of you. So thank you. And thank you, Deborah, for this, holding this space for me. Well, thank you. This has been really beyond extraordinary. And I also want to say thank you to everyone for spending this time with me and with Marilyn. Marilyn, will you come back again, by the way? Oh, I would love to. Thank you so much for asking. Yes, I think we definitely want you to come back again and again. So, again, thank you to everyone for spending the time with me and with Marilyn and Loria. I look forward to when we are all together again. And this is Deborah Poneman. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I know you will. Bye for now.